What's up? What's happening? It's Guy Remember in Chief Dan Lucero back with you on a Monday with another immaculate grid. Felt like today was a good day to do it. As you can see, I'm holding a baseball bat. That's the tip off that we've got a baseball grid for you today. When I saw this morning it was a Royals grid, I was excited to do it for you folks. So we've done some Chiefs grids when, when those come up on the football side. It's been a minute though since I've done a baseball grid. So I'm really looking forward today to getting into another baseball immaculate grid. This is grid number 540, and it was posted on Monday, September 23rd. So if you want to play along, this is grid 540, and this is how it looks. We've got the Royals as the top row, and we have the Oakland Athletics, and we have someone who has played shortstop one game, minimum of one career game at shortstop. The Columns, the Milwaukee Brewers, the Chicago Cubs, and catchers. So anyone who is caught for even just one game with that team. You can get really esoteric with those rows and columns. The catcher for one game, shortstop with one game. And I'm excited to show you how esoteric I can get in the bottom right corner. But let's just start with the Royals. Let's knock them out. There's been a lot of movement between the Royals and some of these NL Central teams. So there are a lot of good answers for both Royals and Brewers, obviously, they made a big trade uh, in the early part of the 2010s. Is that Granky deal brought over Lorenzo Cain and Alcides Escobar? And uh, obviously, Mike Moustakis went from Kansas City to Milwaukee eventually. But I'm going to go with relief pitcher Brad Boxberger in this square to start us off at 0.2%. Brad Boxberger was an all star with the Rays back in 2015. He was the closer for Arizona in 2018, lost that job, signed with the Royals in 2019, and was really not good. Posted an ERA of 5.40 in 29 appearances with the team. Uh, was, I believe, released. And then didn't pop up again in the major leagues until next year with the Marlins, where he pitched 23 games in the COVID year and was pretty decent. And then had a two-year run that was actually really good with Milwaukee in 2021 and 2022. Uh, he was one of their better relievers in, in middle relief uh, for the Brewers. Was with the Cubs most recently. Uh, that was last season. 22 appearances, not real good, and, and didn't appear in the major leagues this year. He may have actually retired. But uh, Brad Boxberger, uh, very forgettable Royal, but thankfully memorable for immaculate grid purposes, 0.2%. We're off to a really, really good start here. How about a Cub? Again, lots of movement between these two organizations. And we're going to get to two more familiar names here and here. But up here, I'm going to go with another very forgettable Royals reliever of recent vintage. That would be Justin Grimm for 0.1%. Now, Justin Grimm had a pretty good run with the Cubs, middle part of the 2000s. He has a World Series ring from his time with the 2016 squad. His best year, 2015, had an ERA under two in 49 and two-thirds innings with the Cubs. Popped up with the Royals in 2018, and in 16 appearances, posted an ERA of 13.5. If you remember the 2018 Royals bullpen, it was, well, it was grim, that's for sure. And Justin Grimm was a big, big part of why. Only lasted 16 appearances with the team. Did pop up at the major leagues again later that year with Seattle, in 2020 with Milwaukee, in 2022 with Oakland. But uh, his time has passed. A uh, career ERA over five, but lasted nine years in the bigs and has a World Series ring. And uh, that's not a bad little career for a middle reliever. But uh, Justin Grimm, again, we're uh, we're piling on with late 2010s lousy Royals relievers uh, in this top row. Royals catchers. Again, this is when you're a fan of a team, this is really easy to get super esoteric and a small uh, rarity score here. I went with... Nick Deeney here, another 2019 Royal for 0.05%. Nick Deeney called up to the major leagues late 2025 with the Royals, played 20 games, hit 196 with two home runs. That is his only major league action. Remember, 2019 was the year that uh, Salvador Perez was lost for the season before the season even began. And Martin Maldonado was a regular catcher for half that season before he was traded to the Cubs. Could have used him in that square. But uh, Nick Deeney was one of the other Royals who popped up behind the plate that season, and so we use him here. I mentioned we can get to some other ex-Royals in this row, the Cubs and the A's. How about one of my favorites, Jason Hamill. Jason Hamill had a really nice career, 1%. Uh, 
started with the Rays, was traded to the Rockies, pitched really well in Colorado. And you don't say that very often about starting pitchers, but had a decent three-year run in Colorado, was uh, part of a playoff team in 2009, was traded from Colorado to Baltimore, then ended up in Chicago, was traded from the Cubs to Oakland in 2014, and gave up the hit to Salvador Perez in the wild card game that walked things off in 2014 for the Royals. So he's on that side of Royals history. And then his final two major league seasons, he spent with the Royals 2017 and 2018. Uh, they did not go well. Uh, 71 games, 50 starts, and an ERA of 5.59 in those final two years for Jason Hamill. But he had a really nice career outside of that. And uh, as a Rocky who pitched well, he's Got a soft spot in my heart, certainly. Uh, so Jason Hamill, uh, former A and a former Cub. Former Cub shortstop? How about a beloved Royal for a change? How about we go with Ben Zobrist in this box? Ben Zobrist, only a Royal for two months, but man, they were a glorious two months. He had 284 and 59 games, helped the Royals win the 2015 World Series. Signed a four-year contract with the Cubs right after that, and that's where he ended up finishing off his career. Uh, those final four seasons, he was a three-time All-Star career, 357 on base percentage, played just about every position, great on-base guy, hit for some power. Uh, you could plug him in anywhere in the lineup. I remember doing remote broadcasts for 580 Sports Talk through 2017 and even into 2018 when people would talk baseball with myself and my co-host at the time, Jake LeBond, and they would say, man, I really wish the Royals would have kept Ben Zobrist. I think there are a lot of Royals fans who wish if there was any guy they could have kept from that 2015 team, uh, it would have been Ben Zobrist, uh, a guy who will always have uh, have a great place in Royals history. Two wonderful months in that uniform and a championship ring to show for it. And then a championship the very next year with the Cubs. So Ben Zobrist, great career. He fits in 0.9%. Okay, so maybe you've noticed something about these first five answers. Shortstop and catcher. This is where you can get really esoteric. If you remember like one specific game or one specific moment in a player's history, like if a player played all nine positions in one game, like Cesar Tovar or Jose Akendo, or maybe a player had to fill in a catcher in an emergency. That's where I'm going with my answer. Nafi Perez. Nafi Perez in 1998 had to move from shortstop to catcher in extra, I think it was extra innings. Might have been the ninth, might have been extra innings. He was playing for the Rockies at the time. Both Rockies catchers were out of the game. One got pinch hit for, the other got injured. So Nafi Perez had to move from shortstop to catcher. The only time he ever got in a game as a catcher. And he allowed a pass ball uh, that ended up uh, allowing the winning run to score for the opposing team. So that's how I remember Nafi Perez as a catcher, uh, blowing a game for the Rockies. But obviously much more well-known as a shortstop, won a gold glove with the Rockies, somehow played 12 years in the major leagues despite never being a good hitter, went from the Rockies to the Royals in a trade, even up for Jermaine Dye. What a terrible trade. The Rockies made a worse one on the same day, sending Jermaine Dye to the A's, for three dudes who never turned into anything. But Nafi Perez for Jermaine Dye, one of the worst trades in Royals history, 0.2% on that answer. Huh, all six of these guys have something in common too. So what if I did this? What if Brewer shortstop, I've already mentioned his name on the video, how about Alcides Escobar, who did debut as a Brewer before the Zach Granke trade, he played just nine games in 2008, 38 in 2009, then a full season as their shortstop in 2010. And then between 2010 and 2011, went over to Kansas City in the trade that also sent Lorenzo Kane to the Royals and sent Zach Granke to the Brewers. And Alcides Escobar had eight great years with Kansas City, played every day, didn't really get on base, but was, of course, the leadoff hitter anyway, because it just worked and you didn't ask questions. You just... Let it ride with Alcides swinging at the first pitch all the way through that run to the World Series in 2015. Alcides Escobar, 2% rarity score. Two more boxes to fill. Can I do it? Can I do what? You see what I'm doing here? A's and Brewers. But Jason Kendall. Jason Kendall, really good player. Really solid catcher. Uh, for, for the balance of his career, of course, debuted as a Pirate, was a three-time All-Star, was a catcher with speed early in his career, which was really rare. Then he had a 
terrible, gruesome uh, ankle injury that kind of sapped his speed for the rest of his career, but continued to be a very good hitter, a leadoff hitter as a catcher, which, which was something you almost never saw. After a long run, nine years in Pittsburgh, he spent two and a half seasons with Oakland, uh, half a season with the Cubs, two years with Milwaukee, 08 and 09. And then his final major league season, 2010, he played for the Royals. No great distinction. In fact, the only thing interesting about his Royals career in that one season, he had 490 at bats and did not hit a home run. Not a single home run that year for Jason Kendall, who finished his career with just 75 of them in 15 seasons. Jason Kendall, former Brewer, former A, former Royal. Can I get one more ex-Royal and make this an all-ex-Royals baseball grid? You bet I can. An A's catcher, I, I could have used Jason Kendall there, but I'm going to use Mike McFarland instead for 0.2% and a 7 rarity score. I think that's my best one since I've been doing these on video. Mike McFarland. Longtime catcher for the Kansas City Royals, 87 through 94, spent 95 with Boston, then went right back to Kansas City, 96, 97, and into 98 when he then moved on to the A's. It was a trade. Uh, he was traded for Shane Mack and spent the remainder of that season and all of 1999 as the catcher in Oakland before calling it a career at age 35. Decent little career for Mike McFarland. Hit 129 home runs. He had uh, 103 of those in 11 seasons with the Royals. Nice little career. But anyway, 0.2% for Mike McFarland. And I have put nine ex-Royals in the boxes today on the Immaculate Grid. I am very proud of myself. That's going to do it for Immaculate Grids with Dan today. Remember, you can play along at ImmaculateGrid.com. Share your answers. Share your rarity scores. And if you're finding this video and you're not subscribed to the 580 Sports Talk YouTube page, you should subscribe to that page. We'll talk to you another time.